Yes. Just want to say a pleasant good afternoon to those of you tuning in live on Global 99.5. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. I just want to welcome you here on the Sunday afternoon on the program Transforming Lives. I'm inviting you right now to share the link with friends and family. Take a minute, go in your Zoom link, share it with others. Tell them we are now live, as well as if you're listening by way of radio, television, this is an opportunity to tell your family, your friends to tune in. Um, we're making plans for two giveaways. I'm going to let you know more about it, and you have an opportunity to win them just by listening and giving me your name along with your cell number, okay? So I just want to, but before we begin, I want to thank you for joining us today. You take time out of your schedule this Sunday afternoon to tune into us. I welcome you and I thank you for that. You're listening to the program, Trans. I trust you can hear me um, in the midst of these challenges that we're faced with, okay? Um, and as I was saying, tell family, tell friends, tell them to be a part of it. Jackie would normally say, be, um, tell your enemies, be a part of this um, special program. She said, yes, we can hear now. One of the phones, for some reason, having some challenges, um, okay? Well, one of the phones, yes, we're having some challenges. And so I had to switch phones. Thank God I brought two phones in in the studios, okay? But folks, I just wanna welcome you here. Um, let me introduce Jackie, who uh, I guess she'd take a minimum role today for reasons she maybe may share or not, but Jackie, welcome. Um, can you at least say hi to us? Hello, everybody. It is good to be here. Um, like I said today, you know, um, you might have heard me share my Facebook story. Um, I've had two dead and one of my staff and one of my agents passing. And so I'm not 100 percent, but I'm in the land of the living, much to give thanks. And I'm here to join in the studio. But I'll just play a backward role, a, a background role for now. And I'll allow the one and only Mr. David Williams to take over the show. Thank you so much. And over to you, the one and only Mr. David Williams. Okay, right. And so I, I'm sure they're going to join me in offering condolence to you. I heard yesterday too, where right, two of your staff members have passed. So that's, that's not the best time at this point. And we, we appreciate and value that you still, in spite of it, you still took the opportunity to at least just to listen in, even though at a reduced role. And so folks today on this program, it's an open line. Um, I have a topic that I want to talk, I want to share um, on, and I'm this time, I, I don't want to do much of the talking. I want to ask you to participate. And the topic, as you know, is the church relevant today? Or put it this way, if the church was removed out of your community, 
right? Would they miss your church? And not only I want you to tell me yes or no, I want you to share whether you decide to speak physically or you decide to type it in the chat. Share some of the programs that you are doing in the community, which is proof that if your church is relevant and if it was removed out of the community today, the community would miss it. But before I do that, Jackie and I are being on it at a special um, award ceremony coming up. And I want to tell you about that award ceremony, right? Um, that is coming up. Um, uh, that Jackie and I will be a part of. And I'm, in, I'm inviting you to join us and to be a part of that um, program, okay? That's a very special program. Um, Jackie and I are being on it. And we thank the Lord for the fact that we're being on it. And I want to tell you how you can be a part of it. Um, this coming, it's in November. So even as I'm speaking to you, I'm trying to um, pull it up right now, right? Even as I'm speaking to you, I'm trying to pull that, I'm trying to pull that up right now. And um, what I want to do, there's a special guest, someone who has followed Jackie and I, always supported us, right? And because they choose to honor us, we want to sponsor a ticket for this young lady to attend this awards. That's next month. I'm hoping that the lady is supposed to come on. She's doing something. Who's actually um, the president. And I'm hoping that she will be able to come on and to share more about this program um, that Jackie and I have to be on it. And the tickets for this event is um, $25. And Jackie and I decided, okay, here's a, it's the fourth annual D dash O dash V S award ceremony chosen. It's your time. And so it's Saturday, October 23rd, 2021 at the Church of God, Burnham Road at 5.30 p.m. There's a ticket of $25 per person. The lady, um, Tamika Campbell is the host. And Jackie and I will be on it along with about three other persons as a part of this. And so Jackie and I decided that we want to pay or sponsor one person who have really always supported us for years and no matter what program we are on. And this young lady is a young lady by the, the name of Patricia Wallace. I call her Pat. And so Pat, you are the chosen one. It's your time. You will have an opportunity to attend this celebration in support and honor of Jackie and I on the Saturday, October 23rd, 2021, 5.30 p.m. Lord's spare our lives. And so we want to thank yeah. you. Okay, that's, 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 part, that's probably part. You want to say something? Let me celebrate with her. Yes. Hi, guys. Good afternoon. I'm so overwhelmed and touched. I'm really, really overwhelmed. And I will be there. God's spare life. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Okay, right. And that's Pat. She has really been a good support of Jackie and I. Even just even in church, whatever programs, Pat has really all she's always there to support both of us, neither um, other persons. So Pat is not exclusive, but uh, we know that Pat has been one who has followed us straight through. Even in church, if I'm in church and I'm doing something and I send it out, Pat will tune in. And, and, I, and Jackie has had the same experience. But what we want to do also, we are, I'm asking those of you listening to this program on cable TV 974. Global 99.5, Facebook, YouTube. Here's what I want to say to you. My cell number, 433-6917. Send me a WhatsApp. Don't call me now. Send me a WhatsApp and give your name and your phone number. We will put your name and phone number in a bag, a box, whatever it is. And then next week, Jackie and I will do a drawing. And two persons, also along with Pat, will get an opportunity to attend that award free. Jackie will draw one name, I will draw one name, and on our behalf, two other persons will um, support Pat. So at least if we don't have nobody else here to cheer us on, um, we'll have Pat and these two winners, one for the Father, one for the Son, and um, I say one for the Holy Spirit. 
And so right now, my text number 4336917. Text the number, those listening on cable TV, WhatsApp, if you're on Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, whatever means you're listening, 4336917. I will take the name down, I'll take your number, and we'll put it in the bag, and then we'll have a drawing and announce the winners next week. And so today's topic, and if you want to comment on it, when you send your text, you can also share your remarks. Let me know if you wish to call your name. If not, fine. Today's topic, is the church relevant today? Or if your church was moved out of the community, would it be missed? Now, while I welcome your comments, but also maybe you may share, what are your church doing? Or what are your ministry doing? Now, I want to say to you, this is not limited only to spiritual, right? So maybe your church may be doing some other program, feeding persons in the community. Your church may be conducting financial seminars. Your church may be conducting health seminars. Or your ministry, you don't have to be your church. You may have a ministry that God has called and given you. And this is what you're doing. And you know, if you were removed out of the community, you will be missed. And you're saying to those persons listening, yes, we are. My ministry or my church is relevant in the community today. What I want to do right now, if there's somebody want to begin, unmute your mic and you can start off. But don't forget, 433-6917. Text me, I mean, sorry, what's up me right now, okay? 433-6917. What's up me? Give me your name, your number, and say, Dave, I wish an opportunity to win a ticket to support you and Jackie. And also, you can share with us your comments. Is the church relevant in the community today. I'll pause for a few minutes right now to give somebody if they decide they want to be first. Who will be the first to say if the church could relevant or if the church is removed, um, nobody will miss them or your ministry. Who will be the first? I'll still pause in case there's somebody wants to start off, wants to be first as to whether the church is relevant in the community today. Anybody else? I'll pause it again to mute to give somebody else a chance. Brother Dave, with, um, with, the, um, with the advent of COVID, uh, that's a very interesting question because... Go ahead. How could the church do its work in this in COVID environment? Um, it, it's... Uh, it's restricted, eh? Um, I mean, you can't have no more soup kitchen and so forth. Um, uh -huh. You can't um, you can't do the things that you used to do before uh -huh. for March of twenty twenty. So, um, I am um, I won't say confounded, but I'm trying to search in my mind how. I know the church has to still be relevant, but how can they be relevant when there's so much restrictions all around? Uh huh. And um, I mean, you can only do so much via Zoom and uh, you know Facebook and so forth. Um, in this environment, I think I think it's difficult to um, um, touch and feel people. Especially with, with COVID and people being so, you know, quote unquote, afraid of COVID. Even if you uh -huh. have, if you have your mask on and so so forth, you know, people are still hesitant to, um, you know, be in contact. So it's 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 a tough uh, it's a tough environment, and, and um, I think until COVID is um, subsides or, uh -huh. or is abated. Um, you know, the, the gospel message can still be preached, but, you know, in terms of that social assistance and so forth, um, it's going to be a challenge. I think that's that's where I that's, am. Okay. And um, now I must say, I, di I didn't recognize the voice. I don't know if you want to um, identify yourself. If not, then fine. Uh, Clayton James Gardner the first. <laughs> okay, all right. C C J Gardner. Okay, no problem. That's 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 an excellent point. Um, is there somebody else want to um perhaps share from a different view, from a different um perspective? Is the church still relevant today? If your church was removed out of the community, 
would they be missed? Folks, I want you to Sorry, sorry, I'm just having a chat. Yeah, good day, Dave. Thank you. Good day, good day. Uh, yeah, I think we go right ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go right ahead with your Sharon. I think we I think we miss um Dave is having a challenge. So you can go right ahead. This Jackie Gardner. Go right ahead, the co-host. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Um the, the question was asked if the church is still relevant today. Yes. Uh, Yes. Um, uh, yes, I believe the church in general is still relevant today. And just to zoom in on the church that I go to in Pinewood Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church, we sort of in the middle of Pinewood and um, we still doing some things in that area. Uh, far as an example is we still serving the people breakfast every Saturday. We have a we have a, a, a door that they come up to where uh, six feet is, 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 is uh, uh, appropriate and we able to um, uh, feed them um, uh, breakfast every Saturday. And part of that is we, want, we give them tracks too. We wanna give them tracks. So we give them the, the physical food and we also give them tracks. And um, just Saturday um, uh, gone, we did a, a clothing drive where, uh -huh. we social, where we social distance and stuff. And so, yes, um, you could still do some things in this COVID environment. Um, I heard the gentleman before me. Um, I think he's going to have to understand that this COVID, and, this COVID is going to be with us for a while. So as the church, we have to be creative. Um, I think our services comes on our face, our Facebook every Sunday. So we're not really just touching uh, 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 locally. We're actually touching the world. So we, you just got to be creative in this environment and uh, to do some things. Uh, the uh, safety safety is the key. Okay, thank thank you. Finished, Denver. Sorry, you you finished? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. That's my good friend Denver Pratt, who, who um volunteers with me in Prison Fellowship Bahamas, who serves as a minister at that Friendship um Baptist Missionary Baptist Church in Pinewood Gardens. So we, we've heard from um Clayton Gardner. We've heard from um uh, Denver Pratt. Um, someone mentioned in the chat, I saw it was something, I switched phones, where they talked about, could you not take the soup kitchen to the people? All right, so somebody posted that in the um, chat. Um, I'm still open for others. Is the church relevant? I do want to remind you, you have an opportunity to, um, to attend an award ceremonies on behalf of Jack and I on the 23rd of October. What's up me, your number and your name, 4336917. And you have a chance for, to win a, a, a free ticket to attend in support of Jackie and I on the 23rd of October, 5.30 p.m. 433-6917. Just say, Dave, I wish for an opportunity to support you and Jackie. Put my name in the drawing and my phone number, and we will put it in the box or the bag. And next week, we'll announce the two winners. Pat Wallace, as of Adrian support of Jackie and I, she has already gotten the first ticket. And we're looking for two other persons to support her. So we only got them three sitting around the table supporting Jack and I. We know for sure we'll have three. So folks, is the church relevant? If your church was missed, your ministry, if your church, your ministry was removed from the community, would you be missed? Or if your church, if the Demoria church burned down in the area it's in, would it be missed by the community? I'm open. Well, Dave, let me just add my contribution on behalf of MG Rebirth International Ministry. Um, you know, I am the president of a mentoring ministry. And I would tell you, initially, when um, COVID came on stream, we were um, trying to figure out for a long period of time how to navigate it, of course. Um, but you, I recognize that, you know, you have to use wisdom, knowledge, and understanding there's always a way to get it done. And so we have been really distributing, finding ways to distribute food, 
um, we've been supporting a lot of um, organizations um, uh -huh. in that regard. Um, in terms of the food bank, we've been having um, prayers. There are persons who have been contacting us and we have been um, prayer mothers and prayer fathers for um, individuals out in the community. We have found, like I said, very, very, very coming this October, just this October, we'll be launching a children's program. So I'm hoping that we can talk a little bit more of that even on the show. In October, we'll be launching a children's program on Friday, um, which will be, just, you know, just trying to be rediscovered, right? And we're shocked to find this out that so many of our children are not learning about the Bible. You know, those, bed, those bedtime stories and, you know, um, stories about those... Um, so stories from like David and Goliath, you know, those old stories from the Bible right. that are still relevant, you know, that we grew up on. And so they're missing that. So we were, we, we have decided that uh, we would now have a Zoom program catering to that, reading to the kids and explaining those um, Bible stories and connecting them to life. So I say all that to say, um, I'm thinking as I look at MG Rebirth Ministry and what we are doing, the lives we're touching one-on-one. -on -one, you might not hear us. Sometimes we, we partner with other ministries. We've been with Transforming Lives and Global 99 and some many of their ventures. But yes. sometimes in our own small way, just th for this month, we'll be given to the visually um, black, you know, visually impaired, sorry. We'll be giving food to that ministry. We did some last month and we're doing the same this month. So I, I'm absolutely certain that if MG Rebirth removes itself from the community, the community will miss it. Thank you so much. Hey, wonderful. Thank you very much, Jackie. Anybody? Dr. Mark, I can call him my spiritual mentor. Dr. Mark, share your comments. You're my spiritual mentor. Share your comments. Is the church relevant today? If it was removed out of the community, would it be missed? Hi, Brother Dave. Can I say something? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I could relate to um, Brother Dan Kaprat. Um, Our church, Cousin Maxi, does the same thing every Last Saturday each month, we have soup kitchen where we go in the community and we also adopt the police station. So we also feed them every month too and give out clothing, um, go out in the community and minister to persons who need to hear the word of God. So we does. If we should move from number 126 Carmichael Road, yes, we'll be greatly missed. Oh, and then okay. the Bishop That's... of Dr. Ranford Patterson. Yes, Mr. thank you. Thank Patterson. you very much. That's Bishop Ranford Patterson. Dr. Max, I, I'm going to call some names of poison silent on me. Is the church relevant? Would it be missed um, if it leave the, would the community miss it if it leave the community today? Okay, I'm not getting Dr. Mark. I see a hand. Daphne Gardner. Go ahead, Daphne. Good afternoon. Good evening. Yes, I believe that the church um, is relevant and it would be missed if it would be removed from the community. Um, speaking as a leader of the girls club for our church, I know quite a number of children in the neighborhood. Uh, um, they attend boys club and girls club. And I know when we had a problem with our bus, not working when we had to purchase a new bus um, we were still able to continue on with girls club because we had a lot of children in the community and fta family training now we had a lot of persons in the community who right. were still able to um, attend just yesterday i had a drive by um treats for my girls club to, to close all the year and I had a few of the girls who were able to just walk from the neighborhood and and, and come and they were able to assist because basically yes. what we were doing um people they the, the girls they would come in the cars drive up collect their treat and and leave but the ones in the community who were walking you know they were able to assist and you know yesterday was a uh, a rough day with all that bad weather, but uh -huh. you know, they were still, some of the kids weren't able to come out, but the ones in the community, because of their close proximity, they were able to come out and be a part of it, so. So, 
Right. So for you, Daphne, the church is still relevant today. And if it was removed and, and it's removed out of the community, the community would miss it. Yes. Excellent. Thanks very much. Folks, I just want to remind you, you're listening to Transforming Lives on Global 99.5, Cable TV 974, also on Zoom, on YouTube channel, Uplifting Men, Transforming Lives, also on our Facebook page, Transforming Lives, or David Williams and Jackie Gardner. 4336917, send me a text if you wish for an opportunity for your name to be placed in the drawing to win a ticket to support Jackie and I as we're being honored along with three other persons as part of the Dove Award um, led by Tamika Campbell. And so I'm just gonna ask others here as I'm looking through the name, the list, if they desire to speak. And if you've spoken before and you still wanna contribute, it's fine. Is the church relevant today? If your church is removed out of the community or your ministry, would it be missed? I remain silent to allow somebody else to speak. Okay, you know they say 10 seconds on the radio is long, right? So, um, and, and at any point if you want to, you can just say Dave and just cut in and cut me off, okay? I have no problem with that, right? But the question is, is the church relevant? Sometimes when we think about the church, we think about the building itself, right? But we know the church is the people. And the people is, um, the church is persons who belong to what we call the body of Christ. Individuals who has their relationship, and we talk about personal relationship with Christ, right? Not what your bishop say, your apostle or your prophet or your rev or whatever words you choose to use. It is all about you and your personal relationship with Christ. Now, I happen to be different in the sense that if I ask you about your relationship with Christ and you say, yes, Dave, I have my relationship with Christ. I know Jesus. Then I can't judge you and I would want to believe likewise that you won't judge me because that's a personal thing. Okay. That's a personal thing, right? When you have a relationship with Christ and he's a part of you, he's in you, he dwells in you. Of course, we know it's a faith venture, right? Jesus ain't coming out of heaven and living in you literally, just for clarity. And he's in you and you have this relationship and he uses you, right, for ministry. So I would want to believe that if you were missing, removed from that particular community, I would want to believe now that your ministry would be missed. Obviously, Christ will always have somebody else who will um, continue the ministry because this ministry don't stop with me nor you. But I would want to believe that that ministry would be missed and he would replace it with somebody or something else. But a fact still, that will be missed because all of us has unique gifts. All of us has unique talents. For me, I'm a radio person. I can speak on the radio. As you know, I've been on the radio from um, 2000, I think, and 11, right? And I've been on television and things like that. But somebody else would have a different ministry and in a different way and in a different form. And so even though I am the host of the show, I would want to say I think that the church per se is still relevant today. And I ask that question because there are some persons who have, in my conversation day to day, have said that in their opinion, the church is not relevant. As a matter of fact, I spoke with someone who actually said to me, his young son is um, an atheist. And I said to that individual, and perhaps that individual may be listening, but I had invited him to listen. But I said to that individual, ask him to give me a call. I can't perform miracles, no, only Christ perform miracles. But I would still be able to would like the opportunity to sit down and have a talk with that young person. But I want to open it up. There are others who want to share, want to come in. Jackie, does you, you want to come in somebody else? Yeah. Um, yes. Well, I'd just like to add, um, you know, as you talk about um, the young gentleman being an atheist, um, I noticed that for this young generation, we have more and more, you know, donkey years ago to say that you are atheist, that was like a big taboo. Nobody or very few persons would have or she, you know, then 
young generation, they're proud and they're bold and they're telling you up front that they are atheists. They don't believe in God that's done away with, um, et cetera. I want to know from, and anyone can answer this, whether from that basis, look at the next generation, the generation just behind us. Um, do you think that we are being effective in passing this gospel on to this next generation? Because I see the amount of persons believing in God seem mm -hmm. from where I sit, there seem to be a significant um, decline in the next generation. So if we're saying that we're still relevant, um, why do you think that there's such a decline um, in terms of our young people accepting Jesus Christ and following um the you know, the God that we know, God, our creator. I open okay. that up to the floor. All right, I see King on, so maybe King may be prepared to answer that and plus share his comments. Go ahead, King. Good evening, all. Um, Good evening. They, just to give my view, first of all, on Jackie. Um, I think it was last year or the year, I think it was last year, no, even before the pandemic. Um, one of the pastors that came to my church and, and he was saying that the church is losing its strength. Um, in England, I think it's England or Scotland, somewhere in there, there's so many churches that are closing down. They're using the churches for different purposes, meaning the, the building, skating rings and all sorts of different things they're using the, the physical um, structure for. Okay, because the churches are closing down. Also, he said that there was a decline in the layman's ministry. Okay. N not a lot of men and females are now picking up the mantle to be um, uh, called to the priesthood or, or, or pastor. It's very, very low. And a lot of them who are in it right now are uh -huh. giving up. Okay. Are giving up. Um, in our own church, I remember I'm, this is a pastor. Um, um, I could, I'm going to call his name. The pastor right on the highway to deal with Teen Challenge. Um, uh, Eric Fox? Eric no, Fox? No, he has a church bond with it by where we. I think, I think oh, you mean Rick Dean. I think you mean Rick Dean. No. The church by, by where they have the the um the road traffic thing. Right on the corner there. Carlos Reed. Oh, I know. Oh. I, I know. Carlos we, Reed. No, community. Um Reed, Carlos Reed, Carlos Reed. Carlos Reed. Yes. Carlos, Carlos Reed. Reed came on the radio says and said, and I I I, I saw the interview. He is giving up on being a pastor. I don't know if he has since changed his mind. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I've seen that. Um, so I don't know if he has since changed his mind or he had a, a, a total recall, right? But uh -huh. the, 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 the strength of the church as in terms of persons are losing every day. Um, like you said, there's atheists, and the people are not seeing. Um, maybe we, the church members, or we, the Christians, living that aspect of Christianity to want to follow. Okay. Um, and I think that all comes down to people having having a total look of Christianity. Okay. And so they're so saying now, well. Me and the guys have a drink together, so it's okay, I guess. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't have to go to church or to be in church. So there's falling out there. You know, one time they said the church is there for christening, marriages, and funerals to hatch, match, and dispatch. Right. Right? And so that was all the build, that was, that was all the, the building is for, or I guess. That's what they use the, the churches for, but nothing else, you know, um, nothing else. And so we need to find as Christians or as the church leaders, why the, the regular persons are not coming to church. Okay. You know, the church, the church back and I am in my fifties, the church back and then had so much respect. 
so much respect. But now, you know, like we, I played softball on the government ground, and when there was a, a funeral at St. Agnes, we stopped to play. Or when there was a, a, a funeral procession going by, we stopped where we're doing and showing respect. Now right. that, that thing is out the window now. Okay. Nobody, nobody's checking for that thing no more. Um, and then when we go to church, you see some people dress how they feel. Yes. There's no more, there's no more um church dress. You know, we used to call it church suit, church pants, church shoes. It's all the same thing. They wear the same thing to the club, to the food store, to church. There's no more difference. And it, 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 it's sad, you know, you, you see ladies come to church with, with uh, them holes in the pants and different things that are, and, it, and it's accepted. Nothing is being said. We accept those things. So we got to get back to hard nosing the church and what the church is all about and what the church um, is there for. We, 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 we relax. Um, we relax the, the, not the penalty, but the hard nose aspect of being the church. We, we are now accepting anything. Um, I have nothing against homosexuals. I, you are who you are, that's, that's that all on you if you're 18. You're, but we have them in the pulpit and it's a known fact. We have them directing our choirs. What? So, this news to me. Oh, <laughs> Dave, I gotta get you out some more. <laughs> and so these these people are all over. You could you, you you hear them, you hear them, you see them every day, and it's accepted because they're just worrying about the numbers and and, and that's how come we're losing it. Because the put the persons who are straight, they're like, Well, I ain't going to that church because of that gay pastor. And then the person who goes to that church says, well, if the pastor could be gay, then I could be gay. I'm not, I'm not knocking homosexuals. I, I am not doing that. I'm not doing, I'm just saying. Uh -huh. We're not setting example for, for uh, the persons out there to want to come to the church. And I think yeah, that, um, that's, what's, that's what's calling a fall, causing a falling off. Yeah, well, Keith. Some, some, somebody wants to say something good, I'm um, Keith. Yeah, uh, Keith, uh, let me say something to Keith. Uh, good afternoon. One of the things that is happening in our church today uh, is when somebody talk about the falling away is that we have to understand that the message doesn't change, but the method, it should change. Let me give you an example. Uh, there's nothing wrong if a person comes to church in a pants. Uh, some churches think that's a sin. I don't think that's a sin if somebody comes, uh, a female comes in the church with a punch. What we need to focus on is that soul, how to win souls. The Bible say those who win souls are wise. All right. Sometimes we have to change the method of what's happening in the church. Uh, a lot of us like to hold on to old stuff and sometimes the old stuff doesn't work. We need to try to change the method. Let's see if we can get these young people in the church. If they want to come to church in tennis, that's fine. If they want to come to church in short punts, that's fine. Let's win the souls. Don't really look too much at the outer appearance. Let's get the soul saved. And so that's one thing we need to look at when we move in the 21st century, because uh, people are different. You might come in a suit. I might want to wear my jeans with my tennis. Does that make me a sinner? <laughs> oh, excellent point. Keith, you want to still say something? Yeah, uh, um, yeah, um, oh my brother. I, I totally agree, and I have I have no objections to that. Absolutely none. Um I I saw him on the board of, at Montevo for uh quite some time. And I only wear uh, a suit now and then. I, I decide to just dress down, just wear pants and shirt. And so I have no problem with them kind of things. Um, my brother, absolutely not. But you still got to be um, respectful. 
I think you still need to be respectful. Um, the the low cut dress for the ladies. I, I think that 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 is not respectful. When you come with all of your or half of your 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 cleavage showing, you know what I mean. So I have no objection with that, my brother. Okay, thank you. Let, let me let me if there's anybody else, let me because like I said, I don't want to dominate and I want to share talking about culture and church. I want to share an experience I had in Africa. But before I go there, is there anybody else want to make a contribution before I share my experience in Africa? Yes, um, I'd like to make a quick contribution. Um, I agree with what was said um, earlier about um, the dress code and stuff like that. Um, I know originally with girls club, we used to, um, the girls had to wear skirts with their t-shirts for a meeting. Um, but now we allow them to wear their t-shirt with Jane's pants because we found uh -huh. out that a lot of the, the girls in the community, they didn't have a skirt or access yeah. to a skirt, but everybody have access to, to a pants. Uh -huh. So we then had to tell them the pants cannot be tight and you cannot come to church with ripped jeans or um, the short pants or whatever. It have to be a, a long pants and then it's not to be too fitting, um, hugging your skin or whatever. So, you know, sometimes you have to move with the times, but uh -huh. you still have to set perimeters in place that, hey, this is still, I always tell them, this is still a girls club. This is a church environment. It's a church club. This is not a school club. It's a, it's, it's a church club. So you have to make that distinction. Okay, thanks, Daphne. And, and, and she brought up a good point because Right, and I'm not on any side because what is so amazing is, um, like they say, sometimes you know there are certain strict rules that is, is adhered to in the church, the building itself. But um, I mean, in school, sorry. But when we go to church, we say, "Well, come as you are." So I'm neither here nor there because I recognize that in Christ, none of that matters. The thing is, agreeing with Denver Keith and Daphne, that we want people to come to accept Christ. But let me share with you something and and. You can laugh at it as a joke, whether you do it on Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, radio or TV or privately. In 2004, I, was, I had the privilege on my, one of my first overseas trip into Africa. And, and, and we're talking culture now, I switch a bit. So can you picture this now? In 2004, young, young evangelist David Williams preaching up on the pulpit. Just remember now, I am in Africa for the first time. All of a sudden, poop. Breasts come out of the dress. The baby is getting fed. Now that's strange. Then all of a sudden, when I look again, poop. That happened literally to me about seven or eight times. I'm only sharing this to show you the, the cultural effect. Listen to me. For me, that was a big distraction. Remember now. I was a young preacher. I was single. I was over there by myself. And this was a, 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 a cultural experience I never experienced, right? Naturally, I, I was there for two weeks. So eventually I got used to it, right? But the point is, so I'm, I'm just saying, um, I only share that just to say that was a cultural experience. But for me, that was, you know, that was a mind blowing event, especially when it happened the first time, right? But getting back to it in terms of the church being relevant, in terms of the church being active in the community, um, I want to agree with those of you who have said it before, those of you listening that I am a firm believer that we ought to preach the gospel of Christ, the salvation message, and, and allow Christ to do the changing. Because in my own personal life, and any time if you wish to come in, right, someone says young and old are turning away from the church because people seek connections, um, relationships, uh, right? And um, what does it say? So they're hurting and they have physical needs, housing, food, clothing, listening here. They feel the church looking at getting you baptized, fill the church with offices, only get together, whether it's a Saturday or Sunday. The church need to become as you are environmentally, emotionally, dress-wise, and church members need to be transparent. Now, what I want to say to that, thank you, Roger, for your, your insight. I always value it. And so what I want to say to you folks, my experience has been one where um, my call was one where I was living with someone. I wasn't married, right? And so the evangelist at that time, who actually was Dr. L.D. McMillan, 
And he preached this gospel. I call it a different gospel. Now, let me tell you why I say that. Because while people were pressuring us, right, to stop shocking up, y'all need to get married, y'all need to move out and everything else. I attended a, a, a camp meeting and Dr. McMillan preached this gospel of, I, I, I call it the gospel of John 17 and 3, where he talked about salvation found in Christ. And we're still talking about the relevancy of the church and in the community. And he talked about coming to Christ just as you are. Now for me, like I said, it was different because people were telling us we need to move out, get married, stop shocking up, stop living in sin, everything else. And persons were telling us you all need to, before you talk, would come to church. They were saying, Y'all need to um, move out. Now, my sister invited me, and she would constantly invite me. That's my oldest sister. And I said, let me go just to satisfy her to get off my case. And so I went. And I heard this message telling me, come just as I am. So here's the, 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 the person at the time who was Dr. L.V. McMillan saying, come as you are. Don't try to change nothing. Don't try to fix nothing. Jesus will accept you just as you are. And I said, this man can't be serious. I hear with this woman. We living together. When we leave this meeting together, we got to go back into the same house together. And he telling me, come as I am. I said, obviously he ain't talking to me because he don't know me. He's talking to somebody else. But nevertheless, this was in now. This was on the, this happened for me on the, the 4th of April, 1998. I can remember it clear. So I got up, or let's say I found myself up because the truth is, I don't know when I found myself up there to the altar. Now, many of you who've had that experience could say, you can't point to that exact time when it happened. So in my case, I only find myself walking up there. I couldn't see nothing. I ain't see nothing. All I know, I was walking up, right? And I'm saying that to you all to say, right? The church is relevant. The message preached was come as I am. Had he shared a different message, maybe I might not have been sitting in the chair today. Maybe I might have been sharing or talking something different. But the message was not telling me to move out from the woman, not to stop shocking up, not to stop living a life of sin, because obviously I know what I was doing. So when I, you know, I innocent, I know what I'm doing. The message was come just as I am. Don't try to change nothing. Don't try to fix nothing. Come to Christ and he'll accept you just as you are. And he'll give you the power and the victory. Now I said to you today as a living testimony of coming just as I was and the Lord worked it out separate us and that, that um, living arrangement together. And, and the bottom line is he worked it out, right? And that's why I believe I'm here today. And so I agree with Denver, Keith, and others that when people come, now this may be strange, but since I'm going to talking today, and normally, you know, I don't do much of the talking. I, I love to let Jackie, because she bring a whole new passion. I say, if there's a homosexual, I say, let him come to the church. If there's transgender, I say, let him come to the church. If there's a lesbian, I say, let them come. Let them come into the sanctuary. Let them meet with Christ, right? And he will do the changing, and he will do the transformation in their life. Just how we did it in my life at that time, I would have been a, a fornicator, right? Because none of us were married, and we weren't married to nobody else. And he transformed my life, because that's what the program is all about. So I'm saying, let the lesbian come. Let the homosexual come. Let the transgender come. Let them come. Let's, 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 let's throw our arms around them and, 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 and let Christ love them through me. Let Christ love them through you. Now, my view is I can't support that pastor or a person who proclaim he's a pastor and declare an open homosexual lifestyle now. I, that I won't support. But my point is, I'm just saying the gospel of Christ does the changing. So the church is relevant. The church will be missed. The church really is you and I. And as long as we as people... Share Christ, right? Preach the gospel of Christ to people, right? Let them change. Let them transform. Let me give you another story. And, and like I say, any minute if you want to come in, you can come in on the conversation. We're talking about is the church relevant? Will it be missing the community? As those of you know, I am a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. A next friend of mine, also a Sabbath keeper, but not a Seventh-day Adventist. A third friend of mine, a Christian who worships on Sunday, and the fourth friend of mine, not a professed believer. This happened on the property of BC some years ago, and this changed my life totally. This is what Christ used to transform my life. The three of us, me the seven day, the next man, the Sabbath keeper, and the third one, the Sunday Christian, I call it, right? 
the three of us argued among ourselves in the control room at VEC, to my VEC friends. We argued among ourselves. The one who was not a Christian, what did he get from that message? Flip the script now. Imagine if the three of us were talking about what Christ means to us personally. It would have made a difference, I believe, in the life of that person who had not yet accepted Christ. So on the outside looking in, I believe all he saw was three professed Christian arguing over scripture, doctrine, and you name it. But none of us talking about the love of Christ. What if he had died then? What if he died uh, uh, two days later? He, and he, he, he didn't hear about Christ. This was the last opportunity. So my point is, rather than me arguing the scripture and the doctrine, and I believe in what I believe, I must say that to you. But rather than me arguing that, let's talk about Christ, what Christ means to us personally, and then we sit down and share why I believe what I believe, and you may share what you believe, why you believe, but the glue, if you want to use that word that sticks, that brings us together, is the man called Christ, Jesus Christ, because salvation is found in no other name but Christ. And at the end of the day, when this life has ended, the only thing that will matter is whether you have your relationship and I have mine, not my church, nor your church, not my denomination, nor your denomination, but what would matter is that we have the salvation in Christ. You know, I don't talk long. I, at least I don't love to. So I want to stop there and give the opportunity. But I want to say again, Jackie and I are being on on the 23rd of October, along with a number of persons at the Doves Award at the Church of God, Bernard Road. Patricia Wallace has already won herself a ticket. So she'll be there to support us. And we're giving two other persons an opportunity to win the ticket. My WhatsApp number, 433-6917. Send me a WhatsApp and say, Dave, put my name in the drawing. And then next week, we'll pick two names. Jackie will pick one, I'll pick one. Two names. And we will then, those persons will have a free ticket to support us. Folks, hey, we open hey, the Dave. Go ahead, Denver. Yeah, what, one of the things um, I think we have to be careful to understand is I believe the church is like a hospital uh -huh. where people come for help. And when you listen to someone who uh, 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 doesn't go to church, uh, some of them uh, uh, usually say, um, you know, they judge, they judge the individuals. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. And, and so we, 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 we got to do a better job as the church in general to stop judging people. Okay. You know, uh, the Bible says all of us have sinned, <laughs> you know? All of us have sinned. So if they're coming, we should we should be thankful and see how we can help help them. The church is like a hospital. You see? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. All right. Um, so we just want to open it, Dr. Mark. Um, I know we have to five o'clock. I always we got to sign off the radio in a few minutes. Dr. Mark, if you're still tuning in, I wish your contribution. I know you got 40, 50 years of ministry. Share your contribution about the church being relevant if the church were missing the community. Um, Dr. McMillan. Okay. Um, all right, I just paused. All right, perhaps he himself is um, I'm, I'm busy doing something. Folks, you're listening to the program, Transforming Lives, Global 99.5, 433-6917. Send me a text, say to me, Dave, put my name along with my number, uh, for a chance of drawing for a free ticket to support you and Jackie at the Doves Award on October 23rd, 5.30 um, p.m. I wish an opportunity for a free ticket and we'll do the drawing and announce the winners next week on the program, Transforming Lives on Global 99.5. Is the church relevant in society today? Is the church relevant in society today? And folks, if the church will move out of the community, will it be missed? Folks, you've been listening to Global 99.5, Transforming Lives. We hear every Sunday, 4 to 5. Wow, that rhyme. Transforming Lives, Global 99.5. Every Sunday, 4 to 5. I want to thank you as we end this live broadcast via radio, cable TV 974. Just a reminder, 433-6917. What's up, me? Say, Dave, I wish for an opportunity to go in the drawing to win a free ticket. It's a $25 value to support you and Jackie at the Doves Awards, October 23rd. 
I end this program the way I always end on radio, reminding you that there's nothing more important than a personal relationship with Christ. Not your church, nor my church, not your denomination, nor your denomination. The fact that salvation is found in Christ and Christ alone. Dave Williams, on behalf of Jackie Gardner, my host, I wish to thank you. Have a wonderful and a pleasant Sunday afternoon. We'll continue for another 10 minutes on Zoom. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Mark Turnquist and the Small Business Association. We will be talking about small businesses. And so we're inviting you to be a part of it. What are the needs? How can we, as an organization, be a help? Okay, so that's next week. We have guests on from the Small Business 242. Next week, Sunday, Dave Williams, Jackie Gardner, Global 99.5, Transforming Lives. Have a wonderful afternoon. So, folks, as we remain on Zoom for another maybe, let's say, 10 minutes, 7, 8 minutes, is there anybody else, any other comments, anybody want to share as we talk about the relevancy of the church today? Or if they're in the community, will they be missed? Yes, I'd like to chime in at this point. Um, good evening, everyone. Good Pastor evening. Lyndon Williams. One of the things um, I think we need to understand in listening to the comments is that I don't remember someone said it earlier, maybe Denver. Our methodology, in many ways, we have used the same traditional methodologies. And in some cases, as a church, and I'm talking I'm speaking specifically about the Bahamas. I've worked in the Bahamas, the Turks and Caicos. I studied in Jamaica. Is that to some degree we have confused and begun to mistake the methodology as the uh -huh. method. And that is always dangerous. Right. That Jesus Christ is the son of God, the savior of the world is the message. How we communicate that message is dependent on time and place who our audience is, who we're trying to reach, what is the particular message we want to send to them at that point in time. When he made message, when he, David made mention about the um, ladies just breastfeeding your children in public, I smiled because I had a, one of my lecturers in college. Well, he was a lecturer, I don't remember if he taught me. He said that he um, was a missionary to one or two, one of the African countries, I don't remember which one, and said whenever he came around, the ladies would pull up the little blouse, whatever thing, over their chest. But when he left, they dropped it down because it was not an issue for the man. Okay, baby food, big deal. Where's mine? You know, what you got cooking in the pot? That was that might have been their concern. For him as a Westerner, the women's breasts were a sexual attraction. But for the native man, it was not a problem. And that's why I'm saying the way we reach young people. We have to use different methods than the way we reach the older generation. The message is still the same. If thou shall not commit adultery is a message that hasn't changed. How we communicate that to them and the way that we live, a lot of it has to do with, like you said, being relevant. What are their needs? Maybe before we go with the message of salvation, we may need to go with oh. someone talked about bringing food or maybe talking about how to stay healthy in this COVID environment, sponsoring a lecture, or perhaps this is Dave's big thing, finances. How can we impact people's finances, show them how to invest, to save, to spend? There are a lot of things which we can use like an entering wedge. In John 4, Jesus started with what he had in common with the woman, water. She was like, you don't have a, anything to draw water with. How are you gonna give me this living water? So then he moved her from water, which she was interested in, to something that she felt he did not know. Relationship, he said, go call your husband. But gradually he wore down her prejudice. And so people see the church as being a bunch of stuffy people. And it is true. We are a hospital for the sinners, not a nursing home or club for the saints. And so right. sometimes we need to put on coveralls, so to speak, and go into the community to reach people where they are in different ways and means. So it may or not always be with, a, in our case, Dave, a Bible study or something of that nature. Sometimes we have to find a different way. Right. What about identifying the lady in the community or the old man who has no one to take care of them, the house is falling apart. 
Yes. They would appreciate if you came in and help them to do some work on the house. You follow me? Yes. No, they may never attend the church, people from the community, but you would have been a witness as to God's love. And that speaks volumes when you touch people, you scratch them where they itch, we say. And when we do something like that, it makes yes. a major difference. And so in that sense there, the church becomes more relevant. You have to minister to your backbone, your backbenchers, so to speak, by looking out for what they're comfortable with. But I, I tell my churches sometimes, not so much the current one, but definitely the last one. I said, I'm not the future of the church. I'm my early 50s. I don't believe that the future of the church lies with my generation. So what does that mean if you're older than I am? Start planning because in many churches, especially small and medium-sized churches, between ages about 18 to around 35 or so, that age group is largely missing. And so you find that maybe we're not being relevant. The last thing on this is, as Christians, we must seek to be godly and we must not operate our business the way the individual who is not a Christian operate. So persons should not, persons should feel comfortable in terms of, um, they should feel comfortable in terms of when we do business that we are above board, the way we treat people. We're not doing the same thing that they're doing, scheming with persons who are, you know, well, you don't scheme with your spouse, you're scheming with someone having sex with someone you're not your spouse, you're cheating in business, you're doing all of these stuff, and then you acting holier than thou. That is the challenge there. When we do something like that, when we start living a certain way, we make a difference. People respect us. Uh -huh. Brother Percy Miller, the late Percy Miller, some guys were fighting through Peter Street, throwing bo bottle and bo <laughs> rock and bottle in the street. And somebody hollered, hey, that's Brother Paul Daddy, Paul Miller's father. And so they stopped. All their anger, they stopped until he had moved. Then they proceeded. To, and I thought it, it almost sounds comical. Then they proceeded throwing rock and bottle. No matter what you thought about him, that was respect. And I'm saying right. we need to live a life of consistency, godliness. David, last thing on this. I tell people this. When I became a member of the Grandstand Church, I think Jackie may have gone already. I remember persons like Jackie would drive from where she lived off the highway, past Grandstand Church, come through Cambridge Lane, drop me home or maybe pick me up. It takes me some. Those things stayed with me. Somebody right. took me home for lunch on a Sabbath. I couldn't tell you what the furniture looked like, the drapes, the color of the carpet. I can't tell you none of that. I remember the food was good and I enjoyed the fellowship. Those are two things that I remember, nothing more. And so I'm saying even with our young people, when we can open, find places or ways and means. Someone talked about working with young girls. That's good to reach them so that yes. they know they have a friend and a confidant so that they were smoking or they think about running away with their boyfriend. We got a lot of teenagers doing that now. They feel comfortable coming to you. Say, look here, such and such and such. No uh -huh. one you can listen. You will advise them. You ain't gonna call them the worst thing in the world. You can just give them best advice you could. And if it's something in danger their life, maybe you may intervene. But when we as a church begin to do some of these things, we'll be far more relevant in today's society. Okay, so thanks. Um, I just want to um, thank those of you for tuning in. Is there anybody else? Any final remarks before we close out or sign off of a Zoom? Anybody else? Any final point? Okay, well, if there's none, I want to thank those of you. I want to remind you, um, those of you on the Zoom, you still have an opportunity to 4336917. Send me your name, your number, and say so you wish to be a part of the drawing for a free ticket or $25 value to support Jackie and I at the DOVS award this um, on October 23rd. We'll have a guest on, we'll talk more about it um, some point next week. Thank you, Dave Williams, on behalf of Transforming Lives, along with my coach, Jackie Gardner. Let's continue to, uh, continue to pray with her, remember her in the midst of this challenging time after she lost two of her staff members um, this past week. Dave Williams, Transforming Lives, Global 99.5, have a wonderful afternoon.